All right, guys, we're going to be having a little bit of fun with the Browning BPS Tactical today. This is a real sleeper shotgun I'm going to tell you about. Let's do it. <laughs> if I can hit anything with it. <laughs> well then. All right, guys. Welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. And uh, we're going to be kind of talking, like I said, about a little sleeper shotgun. Uh, this is something that would definitely be in that category. This is a Browning BPS, um, but it has a 20-inch barrel and a high cap tube installed on it. And this was done from the factory. This was part of a 2007 SHOT Show exclusive for Davidson's. It was a dealer exclusive. And uh, I want to say that Browning did these in 20-gauge and 12-gauge, okay? And uh, they made a limited number of them. Now, for those of you that are thinking, oh man, I've got a BPS, I'd like to have one set up like this. Well, they do offer the kits that you can buy aftermarket. Uh, so if you happen to have uh, one of the, I think they call it the Stalker, BPS Stalker, which is uh, the sporting version, if you will, of this gun, uh, you can get the 20 inch barrel and the, the, the big tube, and you can get your polymer furniture and you can put your BPS in this configuration. Uh, with aftermarket accessories currently. Uh, as far as I know, Browning does not offer this in a factory available configuration. This is something you have to do aftermarket. Uh, these are uh, Japanese produced shotguns of the Maruku plant. Very, very high quality bottom eject shotguns with the smoothest action. Smooth as glass. And uh, I really regret not picking one of these up uh, back when they were a little bit more available. Uh, Chad actually, it was funny, this was a uh, <laughs> This was back when I was still working at Moss full time and you know doing my thing and Chad came in there and you know hey I want to get a pump action shotgun. I don't want to spend a ton of money but I want something that's of a reasonable capacity and that is kind of a no bull crap right out of the box option. And I picked up this uh, Browning I said man feel the action on this gun. And he worked the action it was just so smooth and uh, he was like you know what I'll, I'll take a chance on it I'll get it and uh, I'll see what it's all about. And he bought it, and gosh, I don't think, how much did you pay for this gun, Chad? Uh, 340, I think, 340. after tax and everything. But the funny thing is, I went in there looking for a Remington 870 Express. Right. That was around the same price, but right, right. he talked so, me into that BPS. So it was, so it was either the BPS yeah. or the Remington 870 Express, and uh, I've been exposed to this particular shotgun, this is Chad's shotgun, and I've been exposed to it quite a bit over the years, and I've shot this gun a lot. Uh, which, you know, you could tell by those misses how experienced I am with it. But, um, you know, the, the gun is excellent. Uh, it's of wonderful quality, uh, really nice Japanese craftsmanship. And uh, bottom eject means that you can get away with running a lot of different rounds out of this thing without having any stoppages. Uh, you don't have to worry about clearance issues. And from a tactical perspective, I know that word gets thrown around a lot, uh, the word tactical. Um, but from a tactical persuasion, one thing that is nice about a bottom eject is you're also having the shells go directly down. So you're not clearing shells and having them, you know, bump out of the way and give away your position or give away, uh, you know, or, or distract anybody. The shells are immediately clear and they fall out the bottom and they're gone. And that also makes this a truly ambidextrous shotgun without any difficulty. So it doesn't matter if you're left-handed, if you're right-handed, a shotgun like this being bottom eject is a really, really handy thing to have. The old Ithaca Model 37s were bottom eject and a lot of people like those guns for their simplicity and this gun is no different. So we thought we'd make a video about this because it's neat. And uh, this gun is something that's kind of a bit of a sleeper. You know, not a lot of people know about it. So uh, we are going to group some different rounds for you here today. We've got some PMC uh, number four buckshot ammunition. And we're just going to go down the line here and group a few rounds for you. These are moving 1,330 feet per second, 28 pellets of number four buckshot. Again, bottom eject, bottom load. I'm going to don my ear pro here. And we're just having fun at the range today here, guys. Nothing fancy. This is just, uh... all right, number four buck. Here we go, three rounds. Take my time here. Well, I didn't like that. Load's a little hot. Huh. And we did have a round stick in the chamber. That's strange. Not a bad grouping there. 
okay? Moving down the line, we're gonna go with a double alt nine pellet. This is the Federal white box, okay? We're gonna group three of these. Now this is the stuff you can get in the 25 round packs. Uh, so the white box is just kind of a bulk buckshot load. Uh, it's not terribly expensive. This is not the flight control, which we'll group in a moment. And we've also got some 12 pellet uh, butt stompers here that we're gonna try out as well. All right, let's try that. We, we did have a round stick there, which is kind of strange. That's odd. I haven't shot that gun in quite some time. It might be a little splooge. It might be, it might be. Okay, so white, white box, double aught, 1,325 feet per second. Yeah, buddy. Oh, <laughs> it couldn't handle it. That's what I'm talking about. Dude, it didn't kick that hard. Uh, that double aught, it grouped, excellent. Now that is what I'm talking about. It likes the Federal. And that uh, white box stuff is actually very affordable. Yes. For buckshot. Well, see, here's the thing. Okay, you saw how that grouped. I know the plate is uh, no longer uh, in the land of the living, but you saw the group that we got there on that plate. That was 1,325 feet per second, nine pellet buckshot. All right, here we also have Nine pellet double alt buck, buck with the flight control wad moving the same exact speed. So let's see, perhaps, if we will, if it groups any better. It should have about the same recoil impulse. Let's see how it does on the next plate over. All right, I have to say, it did group better. Okay, so the flight control wad, it does seem to make a difference. Uh, we did get an, a, a, a little bit tighter of a pattern. However, one thing I will say though, for what this ammo is and for what it costs and the bulk quantities that you can purchase it in, not a bad option. If you had to protect yourself with this, trust me, I don't think the bad guy is gonna know the difference. Okay. Now we're getting into something that uh, my shoulder is not gonna like. And let's see if they stick in there too, you know, cause we did get one sticky round. That number four, that's kind of a hot load, all right? So this here is some Federal <laughs> two and three quarter. This is Magnum 12 pellet moving at 12, uh, 1290. The 12 so, pellets stuck inside a two and three quarter shell. Yes. Oh yeah, those and are And this is fun. also a Federal load. Yep. And this is going to be highly unpleasant for me, the shooter. But guys, guess what? In physics, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So that means for every action, there's an equal, or, uh, equal and opposite or opposite reaction. And we're about to demonstrate that. Okay, here we go. Next plate over. Yowzers, buddy. <laughs> that stuff kicks like a mule. Nice. Whew. All right. We're going to move down the line here. How about some Berniki KOs? This is, a, you know, we like our uh, Berniki uh, slugs. You know, we're always messing around with something random and uh, always shooting something random. This is a one ounce slug that is moving 1,650 feet per second at the muzzle. So this thing is getting down, it's got some velocity. Uh, it is a one ounce, so it's a little bit lighter, but this is a really, really cool slug. I'm going to group three of them. I'll tell you what, I got to get a vindication for what happened earlier. I'm not going to group them yet. So we're going to launch these one ounce slugs here and see if we can destroy a few things. I got a few uh, three liter sodas on the ground there. See if I can hit one of them. All right, and the gopher. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap! They don't call them KOs for nothing. Boy, I, I would say that is definitely a knockout punch right there. All right, and uh, those rounds seem to be pretty accurate. Uh, we'll shoot a couple more here. Let's just stack a couple on this plate and just see what they group like. If the plate will even stay up, it might get knocked over. They don't call it a knockout for nothing. Okay, here we go. On the plate on the end there.
There you go. Not bad. I was aiming at the bolt. Rounds hit about an inch above the bolt. I tell you what, just for fun, let's lob one in at a little bit longer range. I don't want to waste too many of these things, but you know what? It's not a waste when it's fun. All right, 75 yards. I'm just going to aim dead center at the plate. Lob one out there and see if it can connect. Huh. How did I miss with a slug? There we go. Nice. Not bad. Not bad. Well, the buckshot and the slugs are doing a really nice job through this thing. Uh, we will go ahead and play with a couple of bird loads. How about some of these? Uh, all right, so that's a one ounce bird load moving 1365. So again, kind of a hot bird load. This would be along the lines of the type of bird load you'd be running if you're shooting three gun and you got to be able to clear a plate rack or you know, knock over some stuff. Um, let's just have a little fun here. This does hold seven in the tube and one in the chamber, so it is an eight shot shotgun. Top her off here. All right, let's just have a little fun. Yeah, that bird shot ain't got enough oomph to get out there and knock over that, that gong down there. Okay, maybe the, uh, the buckshot does. You see where I'm going with this. That didn't pick up. Hmm. I might have short shucked that one, guys. That's how I think that's why it didn't pick up. This gun has been a pretty dang good shotgun. Uh, this one going on what now, 11 years old? Yeah, give or take. And you've I, never resprung it or changed any parts or had any parts break on it? No, I've only pulled it apart like twice to give it good cleanings. Yeah, yeah. So. It could just use a thorough cleaning, perhaps. Well, it ain't been shot in probably two years. Yeah. So, You know, <laughs> one thing about this shotgun is you don't really have that like satisfying like ch -ch, like you hear on, a, on an 870 or a 590. It's so quiet and efficient. That's because it's better because it's a, a Japanese ninja <laughs> shotgun. Because, you know, when nin ninjas use shotguns, they have to be Well, if quiet. that's the case, then maybe it only works well at night. <laughs> I don't know, but I'll tell you what, we are gonna, um, we are gonna take out some of our sodi pops here in just a second. Yeah, well, let's save, do that. Save me a few for the mini shells. Okay, you're gonna try yeah. mini? Oh, that's oh, yeah. right, this thing will run mini oh, shells. Oh yeah, it'll run minis. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, I'm gonna take a few shots of my VPS here. Like I said, this gun hasn't come out of the safe in probably like two years. It's been stuck all the way in the back. And uh, we decided to do a video on the thing, but Eric and I were just discussing it. But uh, we might have to make an exploratory gunsmithing video and pull this thing apart and see if there's some, maybe some wadding fouling that's left over from the last time I shot this thing that's kind of stuck right there uh, outside the chamber and the lead and everything. It might be sticking some of these, uh, these shells when they open up and sticking them in the chamber and everything. And, you yeah, know, we're having those extraction problems. I'm not sure, but we might do a video on that, so stay tuned. I'm gonna shoot some sodas and uh, run some soft targets here. I'm gonna run some of the high velocity uh, federal flight control buckshot first, and then I'm gonna run some of these mini shells because I'm not sure if I'm really up for the amount of punishment that Eric is taking today. So, I have not shot this gun in forever. The sucker is so butter smooth, man. I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, I'm gonna shut up, you go ahead. But one of the things that I like uh, about the shotgun a lot is like Eric mentioned the ambidextrous capabilities of it but the tank safety I'm a huge fan of tank safeties on shotguns like the Mossbergs and such I'm not so much of a fan of the push button style but you know the Benelli's offer that which I do like those shotguns a lot the Remington's many others but anyways take out those sodas there and then we're going to hit the uh, watermelon with slug we're going to shoot some of the um, the mini shells at some of these sodas and a few other targets too oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah! Where'd 
Where'd that one soda go? Oh, he's down there on the ground. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Take out one of our uh, one of our pepper poppers right here. Get down, dude. That's like 12 yards away, and that that buckshot pattern like that, like a fist sized group, like getting punched. With Man, lead. that flight control wad. Boy, that thing does a good job. All right, so look, I've got a few sodas left. I'm gonna run some of these mini shells. That was one of the one of the cool things about the shotgun when I first got it was. Like, I saw these mini shells at Moss. I'm like, man, those are cool. I wonder if they'll run. And sure enough, they do. Uh, some shotguns have to have, like, a special adapter to be able to run them. But look at that. That's so tiny. But the, the bottom eject capability of this gun, let's see. Uh oh, looks like these got mixed up a little bit. Four plus one buck. Well, it looks like we're going to be shooting some. Might be all. What is this stuff? So it's 4B plus 1B. Number four buck and I think a, a one, one alt buck. Yeah, like a, yeah, so it's number four plus one. Yeah, all right, like well, buck and ball, mini buck and ball. Buck and ball, all right, we'll try that. Heck, I might just, let me see. I don't remember how many will fit in here. I'm just gonna load this sucker up and see what we got here. <laughs> all right, so one. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think it holds 12, 11, 12. Yeah, 12. So 12 plus one. <laughs> 12 plus one. Hey, run, All right, run, so, them, run them fast, man. All right. Let's see. All right. I'm gonna shoot those sodas and then shoot a little bit of steel over here on the on the right. See what this little little devil will do. <laughs> it's like no recoil whatsoever. So there's the expanded uh, shell. You see it opens up just a little bit, maybe another eh, three quarters or a three eighths of an inch or so. Definitely not as powerful as some of the other loads, but I mean, dang, for you know, going out and getting some crows or some other varmint stuff like that, perfect thing. Or like, you know, you want to take your uh, youngster shooting or let your wife shoot something that's like really low recoil. Man, these shells are so fun. We'll see how these things pattern. So, got two targets over here about 15 yards away, just half size D28s. They're 12 inches wide by uh, 20 inches tall. So, let's see what these little things will pattern like. Shoot a few shots here. Not bad, for what it is. <laughs> oh, I still got some rounds. All right, that was it. <laughs> Freaking mini shells. Oh, God, I love them. All right. All right, I'm going to punish myself a little bit. True ball rifled slug, one ounce maximum. 1600 feet per second that's fast should be interesting I might sling a few of these in at long range too <clears throat> those true balls do fly nice and straight they do always liked how the shotgun loads it's just real smooth all the internal uh you know mechanism is just real smooth and uh radius so you don't get your fingers pinched or anything crazy like that just overall just a really really smooth cycling shotgun all right, watermelon versus true ball slug at about 15 yards. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, must right shot high. Top, All right, so it is shooting a little high, huh? <laughs> Did you? There's watermelon what? falling all back here. <laughs> Dude, if I open my mouth, I can catch some watermelon mist from here. <laughs> Oh, Lord Almighty. All right, let's see what one of these slugs will do to one of our pepper poppers here. Get down, gopher. See you later. All right. Ah, shoot that one at 40 yards back there. God, those things pack a wallop. 
I got to shoot some more of those. <laughs> oh my God, I just love slugs. <laughs> I just love shotguns. Ooh, that ammo, that ammo has been around the block a time or two. Ooh, let's Should see if it'll be part run. of our stoppage issues. Maybe. Rusty duck ammo. Well, might as well try to get rid of it and see if it'll run. What if? Oh my God. Oh. All right, 75 yards. That joker is light though. It, it is. will punish you with the heavier loads. Well, I think is with the bead on here, it's shooting like a foot high at 75 yards. Yep. Group's good. About eight inches at, at 75. Shoot, I'll take that. All right, I'm gonna let my shoulder kind of kind of ease off this tenderizing process we're doing here. Eric's got one more thing for you. We're gonna shoot some, uh, we're gonna shoot something crazy. You're gonna like it. All right, guys, we're gonna do one more thing with the Browning BPS here. We've got a wall of sodas and we've got a uh, steelhead slug from Duplex. This is a one and one eighth ounce, basically 495 grains. It doesn't list the velocity, but I would imagine it's getting down at some stupid speeds. And this is touted as having some really wicked penetration. So let's try this little duplex out of the BPS. Have a little fun, shall we? Let's see if we get straight line penetration through all these sodas. Oh. All right. Well, guys, they're not kidding when they say that these things will penetrate because they caused a bunch of havoc on those sodas and we could not locate the slug. So uh, we're breaking out all the water we've got and we're gonna try to capture the slug in the uh, gallons of water there. And we're gonna try again. Here we go. Oh boy, here we go. All right, I knew that was coming. All right, I knew that was gonna happen. At least the table's clean. All right, guys, so that slug was no joke. I mean, when they say that it'll penetrate, they're not kidding. We did one, two, three, four, five. Look at that, ooh. Six, all right, seven, and then it pooped out the other side and dented this uh, eighth one and came to a rest right here on the table. That's a solid steel slug. So it's literally just a chunk of steel going down range. That's some pretty cool stuff. So, and a lot of these reviews, I say review lightly, not really a review, but like when we're out shooting these guns, we like to play around with different stuff and just kind of a redneck science perspective, just try to, you know, test some of this weird stuff that we come across. That's kind of cool. Guys, thanks for watching today's video. We appreciate all the support. All of you that support us on Patreon, all of you that purchased man cans to help support the channel, all of you that purchased uh, shirts over on Forge from Freedom, all of those funds go directly back to helping support the channel, help us uh, keep doing what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we really appreciate all of you that do that. Thank you for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Many, many more on the way. We'll see you next time. <laughs>